Well, hello, good people. Today, we're gonna cover dynamic thresholding, how to use it, what is it for. If you look at my settings here, I'm gonna zoom in really tight here. You see my CFG scale is at 30, but yet my image looks pretty normal. And that's because I'm using dynamic thresholding, which is an extension that's already included in WebUI Forge. Now, what I'm gonna do is disable it and generate the same seed with the CFG at 30. Now, taking a look at the image, it's actually not bad for this context of image, but you see the oversaturation, the heavy contrast. Typically, that's not what we want. Now, let's back up a few steps first. CFG means classifier-free guidance scale, and the general understanding is that the higher you go with it, the more it adheres to your prompt. Although, I don't exactly agree with that because it's not actually what it does. However, if I show you visually what we're talking about, here. We'll take a look at a range from 4 to 30. Depending on the context of your image, most people are going to use 4 to 7, maybe 8 to 10, and really it comes down to the smaller details. So as you can see with CFG of 4 and 6, 4 still looks great, but the detailing in 6 just looks more defined, whereas 4 looks a little bit underdeveloped, right? If we go higher in the scale, you start to see from 8 to 10, the saturation in contrast starts to get deeper. And this is the main reason why using a higher CFG is typically not recommended. As we get to 15 and 20, we're getting more saturation in contrast, but now the image is starting to break where the head is now on the shoulders, right? And then we get to 25 and 30 and the same thing is happening. Now let's take a look at an image that's more of a casual photo of a woman. Four to six looks fine. I get it's not the best image in the world, but bear with me. Uh, 8 to 10, again, we start to see the color and contrast. And you'll see really the biggest differences are the smaller details, whether it be in the background or the foreground, maybe the clothing. For example, here you see the building in the background, very different. There's a button here, there's no button there. Little details of the blouse but we start to see, once again, the image starts to break, especially here at 25. There's some weird deformations happening here. The colors are starting to get really burnt out here, especially at 30. So in a sense, any CFG that's higher than, let's say, 15 and up is kind of a waste because you really can't use it. And that's where dynamic thresholding comes in. So if we open up the dropdown here, Let's zoom in a little closer here and make sure you enable it. The mimic scale is what you want the CFG to look like. I typically use five to seven most of the time. Six is usually my starting point. Threshold percentile, you'll want to experiment between 0.95 and 0.99. And for the mimic mode, you want to select half cosine up. I'll come back to what all this stuff means later. For mimic scale minimum, you could use three to four. It's just a starting point for the decent place to start. For the CFG mode, again, you want to use half cosine up. CFG scale minimum, same thing for scheduled value at three. This stuff, I just leave it alone. So I'm going to use a random seed here and leave the CFG at 30. And we're going to generate one image. And what's going to happen now is that this image is going to generate as if we're using a CFG of six. And there you go. There's the image with a CFG of 30, although it's mimicking like you are using CFG 6. Not the best image in the world, but you get my point. Let's try it with a person. Same settings, CFG of 30, 30 sampling steps, and I think, oh, actually, let's change this to Realism Engine, and here's the result with a CFG of 30 using dynamic thresholding. Well, why would you even use this? Why not just use a CFG of 6 or 7? In most cases, yes, I would just exactly do that. Most of the time, it comes down to smaller details. So let me use the same seed, and we're going to bring the CFG down to, let's say, 15. Let's generate that. So here's both images before and after. Here's CFG 15, here's CFG 30. 15, 30. 15, 30. Big enough difference? Not really. 
it's more in the shading, the color, the contrast, slightly higher with 30, obviously. But in terms of detail, really doesn't make too much of a difference. If you look at the blouse here and the way it's positioned, very slight details. Now for you, it could be a different thing. It could be maybe the thumb is longer and it shortens with a different CFG. Here's the previous prompt with dynamic thresholding on a CFG of 15 and here is 30. As you can see, it's the smaller details, 15, 30, 15, 30. We look at in the background there, the mountain, it's got a few more details, a bit more deeper contrast in color. If we look at the smaller details, you typically won't see a dramatic change. And this is why earlier I was saying that it doesn't exactly mean that the higher you go, the more it's gonna understand your prompt. I think that's really misleading. It has more to do with the finer details. Now, going back to the settings, these are the ones that I recommend you start with. The only thing that you really need to understand about all this half cosine down, linear up, and basically the way to think about it is how the noise is handled in the scheduler or sampler. You know, whether you know or not, these images are made by noise. And you'll see all the settings here, linear up, cosine up, power up, so on and so forth. Half cosine up is more of a gradual application of the noise. For example, if we look at linear up, it's an aggressive curve. It just shoots right up there, which can result in an image that's not very good. And with power up, you see that there's this really high upwards peak where all of a sudden there's all this noise put onto the image. Again, the results may not be favorable. To be honest, you can experiment and see what works. I've personally found from testing and what's been suggested on the internet that half cosine up is the way to go. Credit to the creator that covered this on his channel is in a different language. I had to watch the captions, but this graph wasn't done by me. So now I can experiment any range of the CFG scale without limitation. So I hope that was helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, if you don't know about WebUI Forge, you can watch this video on how to install it. It's super simple and easy. Till the next one, I'll see you when I see you.